motorcycling is an inherently dangerous activity. And that's why a lot of people like it, quite frankly. You've got high speeds, high driver engagement, and a lot of things that could potentially go wrong. And unfortunately, regardless of how safe you ride, things will go wrong. I found that out the hard way recently here on my 2022 Honda Grom. Unfortunately, somebody pulled out in front of me. I was riding the speed limit and he was sitting in the left turn lane and I was watching him and he started to pull out right as I was coming up toward, toward him. I slammed on my brakes. This is even an ABS equipped Grom and it didn't matter. I was able to slow down quite a bit, but I still hit the front of his car, went up over the bike's handlebars, over his hood and down onto the ground. Now, thankfully, I'm okay. I had some bruises, some soreness, but everything about me is good. I was wearing my helmet, my protective vest here, my boots, everything like that. But one thing that may have made a big difference for a few reasons is this that I picked up the week after. This is a Turtle 2 airbag vest from Helite. And there's two main reasons I wanted to have it for all of my future motorcycle riding. First off, look at this thing. It's incredibly high visibility. And yeah, some of you, that's not gonna go with your vibe. You're looking to go all leather or black or looking cool. For me, having people see me, especially if I'm riding around on little bikes like this, was so much more important than looking cool, for example. So not only is this incredibly bright, yellowish green, high vis color, but it's got reflective bits on it as well. So from riding in the evening, car's headlights shine on me, they should be able to see a good amount of me and hopefully actually see me, which is something that didn't happen with the driver of the van that pulled in front of me. He said, even though it was a complete sunshiny day, afternoon and everything, he said there's something about his brain. It just didn't even register that I was there. They pulled right out in front. He hadn't been drinking. He was entirely competent, felt awful, but something about the human brain, as we've seen from a lot of other videos, just doesn't seem motorcyclists as easy. So by wearing something super high visibility like this, hopefully it's gonna trigger something in people's brains, let them see me a little more easily. Second off is the actual airbag element. So this inside is filled with an air pocket that goes all the way around, very importantly around my head and neck area, so that if I zip up my vest here and then clip together, nice three easy clips here on the turtle, it fits very comfortably over me. This one may even be a tad bit large, but you want it to be able to fit over even your cold weather gear, for example. And it needs a little bit of wiggle room because when these things fill up, it's going to expand quite a bit. So I do want there to be a little bit of wiggle room for when that happens and can kind of tighten up around my head. So with my helmet on, it keeps my helmet from slamming down into my collarbones or even worse, damaging something around my neck, my spinal cord. It keeps all that kind of braced together. Now, airbag vests have been around for a while, and there are a few different technologies with them. This one is what you'd call fairly old school. There's a tether right here that connects to my bike, and when it gets yanked with about 60 pounds of force, it will pull out a little ball in here, inflating this CO2 cartridge, and then this will rapidly inflate inside, inflating the vest. Fairly simple design, if you will. Now there are alternatives that don't require tethering that use electronics and they use G meters and sensors to sense if you're falling and then within a 10th of a second, just like this, inflates the vest before you hit the ground. There are a few drawbacks with those. Some of them have subscription services. We actually have to pay monthly in order for the airbag to work. So if you forget to pay or can't pay for whatever reason, then the, the vest is essentially just a worthless vest. Not only that, but they are battery powered. So say you're gonna head out for a ride, you haven't ridden in a while, forgot to charge up your vest, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, I bought this thing, I paid big money for it, and it's actually not gonna provide much benefit. So yeah, there's definitely advantages, especially if you're a racer or something like that, to having something that's not gonna be tethered and you're gonna be using it all the time, so you're probably gonna have it charged up. But I wanted to go with something a little more simple like this because my riding habits are sporadic. Yeah. I, tend to go riding multiple times a week in the nice weeks in the summer, but then I might get busy with something. I might be traveling. It might be the fall and my rides might be a month apart. So I wanted to go with something tried and true that, well, yeah, still being pretty expensive, I could just click onto my bike and away I go. Speaking of expensive, this model right here, the Turtle 2 from Helite, costs $700. Now, yes, that's a lot of money for a vest, but 
you have to consider the technology that goes into it and the life-saving abilities for it. If you've gotten into motorcycling, you should know at this point that a lot of the upfront cost in this sport is the gear, is buying a good helmet, a good set of gloves, pants, boots, jacket. So unfortunately, you might have to take a few thousand dollars from that cool sport bike that you want to buy and be sensible and put it into your gear. For me, especially after having an accident like that, spending $700 would be a no-brainer for me to be able to be more assured that if I were to get into an accident like that or something even worse, that I'm going to be more safely protected and hopefully try to avoid the accident altogether. And if you want the airbag protection, but you're not super keen on this kind of policeman, construction worker on the side of the road type of look, Keylight offers options for you. You can get this same model in black. They have a leather model, I believe, that kind of leather that will stretch or something somehow looks cool. You can also get full jacket. So if you don't want to go this sort of setup where I have my, my older riding jacket and then the turtle on top, you can get an entire jacket that has the airbag technology built right into it. Looks a little bit more seamless. For me, I wanted to hide this. I want people to see me. I am out on the road riding to enjoy riding. I'm not there to look cool. So for me, that's just how, that's how I operate, but I also drive a Chrysler Town Country. So, you know, maybe I'm not much one to talk about style. So how does the turtle work in action? Well, you see, I have it on, come up to my bike here and I've got the tether attached under the seat to something, something hard, something firm, something that you can sort of loop it into. And it's just like putting your seatbelt on when you get in the car, get on the bike, strap on, and you honestly don't even notice it's there while you're riding. And then, when you're done, unclip it, pop off the bike, and away you go. Now, for me, because I own multiple motorcycles, I'm probably going to get a few more of these lanyards from Kila. But in the meantime, when I switch from our little Ninja 250 here over to the V-Strom, simply pull this off, put that seat back on, and see, it's kind of a hook mechanism. There's a few different ways, depending on how you're putting it on. You can sort of loop it around like this and make kind of a, a, a noose knot, or you can simply get this hook on here. So we come over to the V-Strom. V-Strom seat's a little bit harder to get on and off, and that's part of the reason I want to get a second lanyard so I can just leave it on here. But I already got the seat off. A few different places I could go. I could go under this bar here, but what I've actually been doing is hooking it right around this piece of metal just like that and then when I put the seat back on wrapped in there nice and tight I can hop on the V-Strom and away we go. Now a lot of people are curious how much force does it take like what if you accidentally get off the bike and it's and it's yanked in here. I've done that quite a few times already in the few weeks that I've had this and it hasn't been an issue it's never inflated but admittedly I am curious to how this thing is when it inflates so we're going to try to see if we can accidentally set it off by getting off the bike. I'm going to move this a little bit forward, give myself some clearance here, and then uh, here we go. Test one, make sure there's nothing in my pockets. I'm, I, I've heard this is intense, so I'm uh, getting myself ready. Uh, I'm getting off the bike. There it is. Wow. This is, that's tight. <laughs> my head is, uh, yeah, very, I should have done it with my helmet on, but I can imagine how tight my helmet would be in here. And it's lasting too. <laughs> so you can see how loose this vest looked earlier and how it isn't anymore. If I were to fall on the ground or something. Ah, oh, yeah, it's, it's plush. Oh, it's starting to deflate a little bit, but it's, it's still really tight. Ah, oh, that's cool. So in theory, you could inflate, uh, accidentally inflate it, I guess, getting off the bike. Um, you see it pulled this little ball out, ball and, um, and collar. And this is what we're actually going to have to reinstall inside the vest. 
But that's another big advantage to the Helite Turtle versus a lot of the competitors is because this is just a simple CO2 cartridge, it's nothing proprietary, it's nothing like Argon, like some of the other suits are filled with, you can install a new CO2 cartridge on your own and then get back to riding within the same day, which I plan on doing. A lot of the other vests, you'd actually have to spend hundreds of dollars to send them in to the facility and get reinspected. I mean, this thing, if I had gotten in a bad accident and were scraped up and it punctured, then that would be an issue. But I should be able to go uh, to go fix it. So let's see how that works. Oof, look at that. <laughs> it's starting. It's starting to get softer now. It was fully fully torqued there for a minute. You can hear it though. Kind of, it's kind of slowly leaking out. Yeah. Let's go put it on the workbench and uh, see what goes into swapping it. It's continuing to deflate. I have a ton of room on our workbench here, but I'm going to start by unscrewing the CO2 cartridge. Now, I don't think there's any direction to say, like, let it deflate all the way before I do this. It's possible it'll start releasing a bunch of air toward us. Oh, yeah, nice and chill. And there it is. There's the 60cc cartridge. And for the extra large and 2XL and larger vests, you'd have 100cc. And for, I think, the extra small, it's like 40cc. Helite sends you a few spares right here and a nifty instruction manual on how to do the swapping. And they're nice enough even to send you the Allen key in order to open this part up and get everything put back together. I'm going to stick this in here. I mean, the directions are so simple that I've only read them once today and I already kind of have memorized how to go about this. Unscrew this without pulling it all the way out. So then there's a piston here that you push back down. You can see right in there that there's that notch. It's where the ball's gonna sit. And it looks like I need to screw just a little bit further out in order to push that right in the opening. Then I take the little ball that got pulled out last time. I'm going to place it back in that hole and make sure that ring is flat. I think I need to come a little bit further out of this. Yeah. That goes right in and then start screwing this back in. This is tightening it back down. And I get the Allen key back out, start screwing it in. It starts getting pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tight, which makes sense because it has to have that force in order to inflate. And there we go. It's tightened back up. Ball is back in that spot. And lastly, we take our unpunctured CO2 cartridge, screw it back in. Everything's firm, but not overly tightened. And feed that little bit right through there. Bada bing, bada boom. Legitimately about five minutes, the very first time I've done it, this thing is ready to go again. You're not gonna get that from a lot of the other airbags on the market. So a fairly highly engineered, but yet basic remedy for some of the dangers of motorcycling. It's not a catch-all. It's not a perfect titanium bubble around you that's gonna protect you if you hit something going 200 miles per hour. But for me, it's worth the minor inconvenience of having to have a little bit more weight, which really, I mean, it's not that heavy. It's not particularly breathable, but because it's a vest and it doesn't zip, I still get plenty of airflow. I haven't been too warm in it yet. It's worth it for me to have the high visibility to hopefully help people see me as I'm riding out on the roads and driving along and riding little bikes, big bikes, nighttime, daytime. I like the concept that people are gonna be able to see me a little bit better. And then if the worst case type of scenario happens where I do have a crash, I like knowing that the thing's gonna inflate so quickly, 0.1 seconds, by the time I hit the ground, my, all my, my core, my vital, my important parts of me, yeah, I might lose a leg, but I'm not gonna lose my brain functionality because I'm gonna be in a helmet and that helmet is gonna be kind of tucked in and protected all around my spinal cord by the Helite Turtle. So thank you so much to Helite for sending us this turtle to not only review, but own. I haven't ridden without it since my accident and since receiving it. 
Uh, thank you all so much for watching, especially you motorcyclists on the channel, or maybe any of you who are thinking about getting into bikes, but kind of worried about the safety element. Maybe this is enough for you to pick one up and get out and experience life on two wheels because it really is satisfying. And even after my accident, I knew that it was still something that was a part of me and was important for me to keep doing, but it's nice that I can do it with a little bit more peace of mind. Hopefully that was the last time I hit the ground in a really long time. So thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.